Hello folks. Well, in my experience with cars, as a long-time enthusiast, I never knew there was more than one battery as there are in cars today. We only had one 12-volt battery. You know, and when hybrids came out several years ago, I knew there were two in those, but not in my own car. I didn't know there was an A battery and a B battery, since it's a gasoline-powered vehicle only. So I get in the car and get ready to start it. I click the starter like it's going to start, and it sounds like it's a dead battery. It just kicks the starter, but doesn't start. And, of course, every warning there is comes up on the screen. But it's settled on e-brake position wrong. Huh? What's that got to do with anything? So I may have actually gotten a heads-up warning when I last drove it because I got the auto start-stop message that said it was an op and I needed to see the dealer. Well, I really don't use that thing anyway. I think that's a waste, unless I forget to turn it off, but that may have been the warning I ignored. So I tried several more times to get the same result each time. Okay, so I said, well, I'm going to try and jump start it. I got a fully charged 12-volt battery here and jumpers, but it still wouldn't start. And I go, what in the heck is going on? Same warnings. So I go ahead and check the voltage of the battery and find it only at 10.8 volts. I figured it was going bad, albeit only two years old. But with the booster battery on there, it still wouldn't start. I had an appointment 65 miles away and it just had to get going. So my last ditch attempt was to do what I always told my friends with computer issues to do, and that was to unplug it and plug it back in. You just loosen this nut that's the negative pull that off put it back on that resets it so i decided to go ahead and disconnect the battery altogether and let the 27 computer modules reset and try it again well that's when i discovered the b battery as i call it it's shown here just to the right of the a battery which is the big main battery and there is a positive terminal And the negative terminal. If you want to change the main battery only, don't disconnect this small battery's terminal. That way you will not lose any of your settings. But if you want to start all over in settings and reset the computer, then go ahead and disconnect this battery. Both batteries charged together are in parallel till auto engine stop initiates. Then a computerized relay separates the two. But if either battery goes bad, it affects the other. And these are just what I did and what happened, and your results may vary. Now this battery is interesting because it runs the lights and engine uh, instruments and your screen and everything all when the engine shuts off during your auto start. Now when the engine starts again, the main battery actually does the starting but this one is like a buffer and keeps everything going. Uh, I changed out this battery because it was bad. Uh, this one is still good. Uh, the car is not that old. I've got, I think, 20,000 miles on it now. But I must have left something on, like a key or the headlights to draw it down. I don't know. And that battery is an AGM as well as the B battery. Well, after disconnecting both grounds, I figured all the codes would be cleared. So this time with the jump, it started right up. The E-code brake code was preventing it to start. By my disconnecting the power, it cleared out the out-of-position E-brake code. So the reason being, uh, after changing the battery, I got a parking brake out-of-position code. And so to reset that, you have to turn on your parking brake so the one in 29 computers knows how to make the car start again. So what I suggest is before you remove your battery, put your e-brake on and leave it on. That way it won't prevent you from starting up when you hook that battery back up. Anyway, I decided to go ahead and change the battery out just to be safe with winter coming. And this is how I did it. And I can tell you, this is not your daddy's. 12 volt car battery change. Here we go. All you need is a 10 millimeter socket wrench and extension. To get to the battery, you need to remove this. This just pops up this little snout thing, air vent. And now 
you can get into the battery. You want to loosen this. If you have any fault coats at all, all you got to do is loosen that nut up a little bit. This will pull off and everything will reset. When you hook it back up. Under here, remove it completely. You can unhook these two wires. And these clips, or just loosen this up and this whole thing will lift up out of the way and you can move it up, okay? And then that way, you can get the main battery out, which is screwed in with that bolt down in there. You know, typical battery stuff. This is your positive for jump starting under there. Okay, but what I did was I loosened up these two screws and took that out and loosened up this screw and I took this bar out and I was able to pull the battery out that way. Otherwise, just take this off. Start the car. And to turn off your auto start, you press that button. When the light is on, the thing is off. I turn that auto start off every time I get in the car because it just seems to be too much strain on everything, in my opinion. And it's supposed to be the government's way to save gas. But it's also wear and tear on the starter. And this little battery, it is actually the thing that usually goes bad if your auto start doesn't work, not the main battery. One of the reasons I'm changing this battery out is because these caps, watch, they're, they're popped out. Probably the same thing on this side. Yeah, look at that. That cap has popped out. <laughs> I can't push it back in. So that's it for today, folks. I hope you may have learned something while I learned something. You know, the manual says there is a heavy-duty starter and battery in this thing, but it doesn't say there's two batteries, so now I know. Plus, I learned that the e-brake needs to be set before disconnecting the battery or the fault that will appear will also prevent a start, but can be cleared by removing the negative battery cable clamp. So thanks again for watching. Please subscribe and hit that bell for notifications so when I make new content, you'll be notified. And I certainly would appreciate that more than you know. This is Dave the Night Flyer, signing off till the next episode.